Healthy couch potatoes, how are ya? My name is Zach. Today we're going to be talking about fats, just all the fats. If you have not enough fats, you're going to end up with the risk of heart disease. You'll probably develop diabetes. Your energy levels will be spiking and dropping all over the place and you'll have some dried out skin. But of course, if you have too much fat, you'll end up having a heart attack or two, develop poor digestion, and of course, get fat. Now, there's a host of issues with being overweight or obese. We're not going to get into that today, but instead what we will be getting into is what are good fats, what are bad fats, and how much should you be taking in every day, and what's better for your diet. So without further ado, we'll get into all of that, starting with some really terrible fats, trans fat. Guys, I need you to stop what you're doing and pay super close attention to what I'm about to tell you. I've been going over this specific scientific article regarding macronutrients, and it looks like if you don't click like on this video and subscribe, as much as 70% of the protein that's currently in your body will instantaneously become trans fat, and you will simultaneously suffer both a heart attack and gain diabetes. So just click like, click subscribe, and we can move on, and nobody has to die. Most trans fats are artificially created through a process called hydrogenation, and that's just adding hydrogen to liquid fats. And what it does is it makes them solid at room temperature. Now, this process is done so to improve the consistency of certain foods and certain oils, as well as extend their shelf lives. But once it's digested, the only thing it's really good for in our bodies is raising the amount of bad cholesterol that we have called LDL or low density lipoprotein and lowering the amount of good cholesterol we have, which is HDL, high density lipoprotein. So it's really just not that great for us. Um, one note I will make though is that some trans fat is naturally occurring and it comes from beef and certain high fat dairy products and that can, it seems to have the opposite effect, although scientists are kind of split on that. It could possibly raise the good cholesterol and lower the bad cholesterol, but I wouldn't use that as an excuse to consume more beef or dairy. It's um, both of those have some negative fats in there. We'll get into saturated fats, but just keep it in mind. Trans fats are widely recommended. You just avoid entirely. So we started with the worst of it all, and now we are going to the slightly less bad, which is saturated fats. Now, saturated fats are also solid at room temperature, and thus they're going to have pretty much the same effect as trans fats did on our body, albeit they're a little bit easier di to digest so we can handle more of them in our diet. So they're going to be raising the amount of bad cholesterol we have, and they're going to contribute to a lot of inflammation within our bodies when we're having too much of them. So to maintain a healthy level of low saturated fats, what I recommend is replacing some of your red meats with poultry and fish. And for all the dairy you're consuming, uh, if you love cheeses like I do, you can replace some of them with vegan options or vegan cheeses. So if I know I'm gonna go overboard one week making some fettuccine alfredo or something like that and go use way too much Parmesan cheese as I always do, then in some of my other dishes, I'll substitute with vegan cheeses. And I find that that's a really healthy way to not give up the foods that I love. So with that, we can finally start talking about the good fats, which are the unsaturated fats. Now these ones are liquid at room temperature and they help us lower our bad cholesterol, raise the good cholesterol, reduce the risk of heart disease, and there's just a ton of benefits that we'll go through. Um, but first, I just have to break it down for you because it's not just simply unsaturated fats. You have the monounsaturated fats and the polyunsaturated fats. They serve the same basic purpose, but um, we're still going to split them up because you need both in your diet and they come from different sources. So monounsaturated fats are mostly found in nuts, olives, and avocados. And if you're not a fan of those like I am, then you can go for the oils of those respective names. So I use a lot of extra virgin olive oil in my own cooking. Whenever I need extra fat in my diet, that is exactly where I go to. I'll just use more extra virgin olive oil when I'm cooking some turkey or um, beef or something along those lines or chicken. 
Another thing to mention uh, for nuts, uh, you don't have to use oils per se, you could also use butter. So if you like peanut butter or almond butter, cashew butter, those are all excellent options for you as well. Uh, going on to polyunsaturated fats, these mostly come from plants. So you're going to want to think of safflower, sunflower, corn, soybean, and each of those have their own oils as well that you can use in your cooking. Um, can you guess I just love oil? <laughs> And of course, the, the most important polyunsaturated fat is going to be your omega-3 fatty acids. People think they only come from like salmon and tuna, and that's true. The cold water fish are the best sources of omega-3s, don't get me wrong. But there are also other options, especially for you vegans out there. I don't want you to just die. Uh, you can get your omega-3s from flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts as well. As I was saying earlier, omega-3s are the most important polyunsaturated fat and probably just the most important fat in general that you can have for yourself. Um, they have a number of benefits from lowering inflammation, lowering blood pressure, reducing triglycerides, which is fat in your blood, and stopping the buildup of plaque. And plaque is not only in your mouth, guys, it's also in your blood. So now that you know what kinds of fats are out there and how they affect your body, let's go ahead and talk about how much you should be having. So the dietary guidelines for Americans recommends anywhere between 25 and 30% of your caloric intake be from fats. Now on a 2000 calorie diet, that's going to come out to 500 or 600 calories. At this point, I think it's pretty important that I mention to you fat it is nine calories per gram and protein and carbs are both four calories per gram. So with fat, the, you're only gonna be looking at 55 to 70 grams of fat per day, which probably doesn't sound like much. Now, if you're on an extreme diet and you wanna really go down on the calories, especially if you're female, um, which I guess dietitians will, or nutritionists will typically assign you a lower caloric intake, um, in that case, I would highly recommend not going below 40 grams of fat per day for both male and female. Just try not to go below that. Otherwise, it'll hurt your brain function and be more detrimental to your health than helpful. If you want to be cutting calories, it's probably better that you look at carbs, but I will definitely have another post regarding carbs. Also, you don't really have any purpose to go above 70 grams of fat, even if you are taking in more calories. I personally never go above 80 if I can help it. I mean, my diet sometimes I'll reach like 150 if I'm having a really crazy cheat day. So uh, no shame, but um, just know that when you're structuring your diet, there's not really a big point um, that you should make of yourself for going above 70 or 80 grams of fat, even if you have as high as maybe 3,500 calories per day, which is something I have to do when I'm trying to gain weight. You can still do it if you're literally just trying to gain weight through any means necessary, and you also want to bring up your body fat percentage. But if you're already at a healthy body composition and you're just trying to gain muscle or healthy weight, then I would just recommend upping protein and carbs at that point. So don't mess around with your fat too much. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that saturated fat, because our bodies can digest it, but it doesn't really do much for our health. The same guidelines, dietary guidelines for Americans recommends no more than 10% of your caloric diet be from saturated fats. And if you're already at risk with cholesterol or you've been diagnosed with high cholesterol, then really you want to limit it to 7% or less. And which at that point, you're kind of treating it the same as trans fat, just stay the heck away. <laughs> That is it, my Healthy Couch Potatoes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and hopefully you're also more prepared to structure your diet moving forward. And let's all go to the grocery store, get some extra virgin olive oil. And also, um, I should have mentioned this sooner, but avoid the vegetable oils. Uh, be very intentional about the oils that you buy because you're either going to get monounsaturated fats or polyunsaturated fats. But beware of vegetable oils because a lot of them do have a lot of saturated fats. And if you're not careful and you're not reading the labels, you might even get some trans fat. So uh, just be careful, make sure you know what you're buying, stay healthy, take it easy.